Uh, let's go back and see how we do one here. We got some questions. Uh, from Moonstone. If one is both right and left brain, would one use both the F and the B to balance per your example? Yes, if one is more whole brained, whole brain people can use the uh, fundamental note uh, and the balancing note, or as um, uh, us practitioners are used to calling the base note and the reciprocal notes uh, together. Um, and yeah, just just play with that for a whole brain person. But a whole brain person will also just like um, a left brain sort of um, answer to that question too. So you could just play the F, but you can experiment with both, just playing the F by itself and singing F in octaves, uh, singing and playing the F in an octave on the pitch pipe, um, like this. <laughs> it and play the different octaves of the F that your voice can hit, uh, and that will help. Um, here is another application of this, of this uh, type of software. Um, if you're having allergic, uh, or you know someone who's having allergic reaction to a medicine, um, let's say the person, let's go back a few slides here. And let's say in this slide right here, where there's so much of the note B right here and right now, if a doctor were pr to prescribe me a medicine that had the energetic frequency uh, of the note B, I would put, my body would probably reject it because my body already has a lot of B in it right there. So you can use this software to find the weak notes in a person's voice and then work with the doctors um, if, well, a bioacoustic practitioners know how to do this. Uh, you would have to get in touch with a, a bioacoustic practitioner or, you know, myself. Um, we could record the person's voice and find out what were his weak notes and then find the types of medicines uh, using the molecular weights of the medicines to find the frequencies of those meds and know that, oh, if there isn't a lot of F in this person's voice print, can we find that type of a medicine that has um, the base frequency of the note F in it? The body will really like that sound because it doesn't have a lot of that frequency in it. So if you put a chemical in it that it's that frequency, your body is going to work with it and use it much better than a drug that has the uh, frequency of a note that you already have, uh, you know, plenty or too much of in your voice. So that is a, a, a great application of this uh, work of Sherry's. So if you uh, know anyone who has that type of a problem, you can give me a call and we can do this sort of thing over the telephone. Um, here's another application of bioacoustic theory. If you, if you use crystals, you can program a sound into a crystal. You can ask the crystal to hold the energy of the sound and then as you let's say you don't have any of the note F you can um, sing and play the note F into a crystal as you ask it to hold that frequency for you and then take that crystal and hold it in your pocket to keep that energy of the note F and the crystal you know energetically in your sort of magnetic field um, a lot of times uh, it, this uh, crystal uh, that has been programmed with a specific, let's say, birthday frequency of someone who has suddenly died who is close to you and you're having trouble um, cl with, with closure issues, you can program the crystal with the, fre the birthday frequency of that person and when you hold it, you will feel that person's energy. Um, that's another wonderful application of this. Um, let's see. For question. You are verifying the need for tone trials, presupposing brain dominance ignores too many variables. Um, that was from Kevin. Oh, I see. He's talking to some other people. Okay. Um, you can also use the uh, uh, nano, or uh, not the nano voice, that's the free software, but the invoice is the software that you would buy from Sherry that gets uh, so much more information than just a couple of paragraphs on, on your personality trait. Uh, your voice can be recorded over the telephone. 
and your report can be emailed to you because you don't need a special microphone to do these types of reports. And the personality trait reports, I wonder, Sherry, um, I know you were working on some software that uh, was going to compare um, um, voice prints of um, couples or people who uh, spend a lot of time with each other or, or if, let's say, you've got a new boyfriend or a new girlfriend and you want to know are you sort of energetically compatible with this person, you can do their voice prints, uh, do each other's voice prints and see if uh, let's, if you both have too much of one note that might be a, an area where you're going to clash, uh, but one person might be low in the note C and the other person might be high in the note C and those are going to be two compatible persons, you're going to be able to pull energies from each other. So uh, I don't know... Um, if Sherry, if you're still listening, if that if that software is uh, finished yet, or when that might be available, there's two new programs, and right now it's just one person's print and one person's print. But we have one that compares groups, and then one that compares couples, either for compatibility for a relationship or for uh, committees and things like that. But we just don't have any um, body that knows how to compare the two. Um, people, are, this is such a new kind of program. We had to go out of the country last time to get it done. And so I think we're going to have to do that again. Mm. All the databases are done. So it could be done by hand, but to get it computerized, we're just going to have to, I don't know, jump into the future, um, find a pot of gold, uh, something. <laughs> All right, but it's coming, uh, and at some point we'll be able to um, compare the voice prints of couples and uh, individuals who might be interviewing for a job, say a corporation wants to create a special team to do specific tasks, and they want to make sure that the personalities of the people on these teams are going to work together and complement each other. That's something that you can do with uh, this type of software once we get the compatibility uh, Compatibilities and comparisons all programmed into the into the software. We do have one right now for leadership, but it's not a comparison um, to to anybody. We can do two nano voices and compare them manually to see if you're compatible, but we just can't do it online yet. Okay, and we have a question here about the crystals. How do you suggest clearing a crystal prior to giving a specific note? Um, yes, and there's a mark is saying, you know, connect with Gaia and source, love, intention to clear the crystal. Absolutely. Uh, I, w I typically will hold it between my thumb and my forefinger. Uh, uh, if it's, uh, you know, double pointed you know, on each end or not, but I, w I would hold it between my thumb and forefinger and exhale through my nose, through my nostrils, uh, onto and around the crystal and the sort of ions and uh, energy coming out of the breath of my nose would also help, or your nose, you know, would, would help to clear uh, the crystal. You could also uh, dip it in a little bit of, uh, let it sit for a bit, a little bit of salt water, uh, sea salt and water. Uh, that will clear it nicely. There's Kevin, put it in the sunlight. That will clear it. There's lots of ways to clear a crystal. Um, and the most important thing is just is your intention. Uh, and asking it very clearly to uh, to hold the frequency works very well. Um, where are we? I think we're about to the end of the presentation here. Yep, got my contact information, uh, my website, thesoundlady.com, uh, and we have about a half an hour left. So now is the time for questions. 